I mean, I can get my DNA. Right now, y'all want it? In this video, we will be going over the two most viewed interrogations. Number one, a $200 murder. In May 2019, a scary murder took place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Orlando Ewell was found killed in broad daylight near 25th and Pierce. The case was puzzling until authorities obtained footage from a CCTV camera, which helped them make a breakthrough in their investigation. The TV show The Murder Tapes, I Did Something Real Bad, tells the story of this gruesome murder and how the police worked to catch the person responsible. At the time of his death, Orlando Ewell was 44 years old and lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He was a private person, but known for his helpful nature and generosity towards others. He had a small group of friends who thought highly of him. The shocking part about his murder was that he was a friendly person and didn't have any known enemies. On May 8, 2019, a 911 call alerted the police about a possible murder near 25th and Pierce in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. When the first responders arrived, they found Orlando Ewell lying on the ground in a pool of blood. The 44-year-old Orlando was pronounced dead right away. The initial medical investigation showed that he was shot in the neck from close range. The way the bullet hit him suggested that he might have been trying to run away when the attacker shot him from behind. A later autopsy confirmed that Orlando died from a single gunshot wound to the neck. The initial investigation into Orlando's murder was tough because the police didn't have many clues to start with. Even his friends couldn't think of anyone who would want to harm him and no witnesses were found despite searching the area thoroughly. The fact that Orlando didn't have enemies made it even harder to find potential suspects. However, the police found a lead when they investigated the area where Orlando's body was found. They checked footage from local CCTV cameras and managed to trace his last movements. They discovered that he was seen in a Pontiac G6 car. Using the CCTV footage, they tracked the car and learned that it had picked Orlando up from a gas station at South 27th and National Avenue in Milwaukee. The officers quickly realized that one of the people in the car was responsible for killing Orlando and leaving his body near 25th and Pierce. They traced the car back to its owner, a 22-year-old named Kiera Walker, who was known to sell drugs on a small scale. Before the police could question her, a witness who was said to be Kiera's friend came forward and claimed that she was in the back seat of the car during the whole incident. According to the witness, on May 8, 2019, Orlando approached her car and said he would get $200 later in the day to buy some drugs. He left his wallet with Kiera and was later picked up from the gas station. However, when Orlando got the money, he only wanted to spend $40 on drugs instead of the full $200, which made Kiera angry. They got into an argument, and she threatened Orlando with a gun. Orlando said he wouldn't spend all his money on drugs and tried to leave the car. During the argument, the gun accidentally went off, and Orlando fell out of the car near 25th and Pierce. Kiera drove away from the scene. Another person in the car at that time came forward as a witness and identified Kiera as the suspect. The combination of the witness statements and CCTV footage... Oh, oh. Don't know. This is the guy that got shot right here. Because he got shot, Willie B and Karen got arrested. What do you think Willie B and Karen said? Mm -hmm. Say it. Something like that. They said they were, they were present with you. I wasn't there. They weren't with me. Oh, you, you were there. That's why I'm sure Titi's going to get arrested because she's going to initially lie for you. And that's why Mama's going to get arrested because she's going to initially lie for you. Oh, my goodness. You already told them. So after we talked to Willie B, we talked to Karen, we come to look for you. We find you. Mm -hmm. You get arrested and you brought down in the car while the detectives talk to your girlfriend and talk to your sister. Mm -hmm. Your sister initially lies, um, but as a handcuffs going on, she can't get the story out of her mouth fast enough. The story that you told her. 
And she ain't never been arrested before. She's a good girl. I ain't telling her nothing. Well, she said that you did tell her something. And the story that you told her lines up with Willie V and Karen's story that they told us. Now, the car, we're gonna find the car, unless you drove it into Lake Michigan or whatever, but we're, we're gonna find the car. And we're gonna find out that you didn't sell it a minute ago. Let me tell you what else is gonna happen. The search warrant will be done for your phone, your phone records, the phone that you had at that point in time. These are a motherfucker. You know why? Because it's like cookie crumbs. Everywhere you were, everywhere you've been, what time you were there. And then it's gonna match up with Karen's and with Willie B's phone. Same cookie crumbs at the same time, at the same places, 25th and Pierce at 8.40 a.m. Now, I ain't out to get you. <laughs> that ain't, I'm not here to get you. All I'm here for is the truth. If the truth is that you're a cold-blooded killer that's out there killing people, then that's the truth. The detectives plan to search for the car and phone records to confirm the testimonies. They believe that the truth will be revealed whether the defendant is a cold-blooded killer or someone who had to defend themselves. They urge the defendant to be truthful because eventually the truth will come out. If the truth is some shit went bad, and you had to defend yourself for whatever happened, then that's the truth. I'm not here to get you. I'm more like a secretary. You know how this works? I write down what you tell me, I take it back to my computer, I type it up. I bring it over to the DA's office and I say, these are the facts of the case. This is what Willie B said. This is what Karen said. This is what Ashley said. This is what Mama said. This is what TT said. And most importantly, this is what Kiara said. Then the DA decides what they're gonna do with this. It ain't me. Like I said, I'm not out to get you. Where my sister at? She's in jail. So, why she get booked for me? What do you mean? I'm saying like, why they ain't gonna be in I'm saying? How do you know she got booked before you? You just said she didn't sell. But she got on blue. Mm -hmm. And that date and the picture is today's date. Right, so that means she went to book it. Yeah. Yeah. So how are you gonna tell me why? I'm sorry? What's the question? You just asked me how I know that. How you know what? That she got booked before you did? Maybe you got booked before she did. Well we talked to her. But we, we talked, talked to her before you. How long you been in that cell? About four hours? No, six hours? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she got booked. Before she even got booked, she was telling the police her story. Then she gets booked and she tells the police her story again. The only thing that you like this. The only thing that you can do is help yourself up. And, and you might not think that. You might think, oh, these cops are some, you know, punk ass bitches. They want to try to put cases on people. The only person that can help you out is you. Kieran, it doesn't get much. I mean, normally we have to work a lot harder to figure out what happened to somebody. This, this one just kind of boom, fell into our lap. I ain't even gonna lie, this ain't even good police work. This some shit that just stumbled and dropped right on our lap. Can't even take no credit for this. I can't say, look at me, I'm the best detective in MPD, I can't. It's just like a present, boom. It's, that's what it is. Now where we're at is we're at talking to you, we're here talking to you, and we're trying to figure out, is this chick a cold-blooded killer? Or what happened? Well, you're looking at me like, I can't talk for you. I may have an idea of what happened, but maybe people are lying. Maybe you told them to say this, to try to protect you. I don't know. Who, who said it? You, well, I can't you tell you what was said because if I tell you what was oh, said, no. if I tell you, oh, you know, if I tell you what was said, and then you say, yeah, that's what happened. Well, then it ain't no good. It don't mean nothing because I put the words in your mouth. The detective tried to tell Kiara that he doesn't have to work hard on the case because all the evidence is already there. He said they don't need a confession from her to make an arrest because they already have everything they need. 
The detective referred to this case as a present because it was straightforward and routine for them. You know what happened because you were there. So if you say this is what happened and it matches up with the other pieces of the puzzle and everything comes together, then it comes together. Then it's the truth. If it don't match up, then it ain't the truth. Then what do you think the DA does? What do you think the judge does? They go by worst case scenario. Because what do they see? They see cold-blooded killers all the time out there trying to kill people. When can I make a phone call? When you get to county. I can't make one now? No. Why? Because we don't allow people to make phone calls from here. You can do it at county when you get to county. We don't have phones here. You got a phone? Mm-hmm. Why can't I call me a phone? Because it's my phone. This ain't for me, Kara. Yeah, this that's not how this goes. This ain't for me. This is for you. This is, this is about your future. This ain't about my future. What the hell is my phone call? What? What the hell do the phone call? We can't make phone calls from here. Okay? Well, this is for Coney. Yeah. Who would you be trying to call anyways? Hmm? Who would you be trying to call anyways? My people see my daughter all right. Your daughter? Mm -hmm. How old's your daughter? Six. Where's she at? I don't know. We, this is the thing. We got detectives on their way to your mama's house. We got detectives on the way to TT's house. Okay. Because the way I understand it, the car was supposed to be at TT's house. So, that's where they're going. Um, so if you were calling one of them to find out how the daughter is, that would be an issue. Do you see what I mean? That would be kind of a conflict. During the interview, Kiera appeared unfazed by the situation and asked for a phone. The detective told her they couldn't provide a phone and questioned who she wanted to call. Kiera replied that she wanted to call her daughter. At the time of Orlando's murder, Kiera was already on probation because she had been convicted of armed robbery in 2017. Due to this, she faced additional charges for possessing a firearm as a felon and felony murder. Before the trial began, Kiera chose to plead guilty to second-degree murder. In 2019, she received a sentence of 16 years in prison, and after her release, she will be under supervision for 10 more years. Since she is not eligible for parole yet, Kiera is currently in Techita Correctional Institute in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. She is expected to be released in the year 2045.